Joining me today, Nima Baby's here with me. What up? What's up? What's up? She got the off white on. She she came prepared. She came ready I today. Did. I I put my rodeo on and everything just for you. Because <laughs> usually I, I'm at work. This is what I'm usually wearing, you know. But I'm trying to look like something a little bit real quick. <laughs> you have to pop. You have to pop out real quick for the Zoom call. Real quick, real quick. What's up though? How you been? How's life? How's everything going for you right now? I'm good. Life is life is life. You know, it could be better, if, but you know, I can't complain. I'm alive, so. A little know. bit before this call, we were talking about you know it's been a minute since you dropped the project, and and which I'm gonna get it. We're gonna get into the it's Nima Baby project in a second, but we mm -hmm. also have a new project on the way, which is very exciting. Yes. We back it's to cool. we back to me. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Drop the name. You know you want to. <laughs> it's, called, it's called Heavy on the Pretty. Heavy on the so, Pretty. Yeah. When we think it, yeah, like August, that. right? Yeah, like end of August. Trying to get it sooner than that, but end of August. So tell me about this 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 year long break that you that that we're coming off of now. Oh man, I didn't want to take a break, but like I kind of got discouraged in the middle of it all. Um, I know it takes a while and things doesn't always move at your pace, but I got a little discouraged and distracted, which is bad <laughs> for artists. Um. But yeah, just life took a toll. I had a lot of issues, a lot of things I was dealing with. But I noticed I was depressed a lot and I couldn't understand why. And I finally thought about it. I was like, something is missing. And I realized, I was like, oh, it's your music. That's what it is. Because when I'm in the studio, I'm the happiest, like ever. Like, that's my happy place. When I'm writing, I feel good. And I'm like, when I'm not doing it, I'm like, you know, I feel like that, yeah. that same feeling. So I'm like, this is what keeps me happy. This is what keeps me going. So I got to go hard and just give it everything. So. I'm, I'm, I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> this is exciting. So how is this project for you, you know, with this year-long break in between and COVID and everything kind of this crazy past year that we've all had, what is it, how is this project different from the last project you put out? Well, I feel like I definitely came harder with my pen. Okay. And also, it's, I put a lot of, you know, versatility in it. It's like, I have like a pop record. I have like a, uh, the, the drill, like I have a record like that. Um, I have different records that people could relate to. It's not just for R and B. It's mixed up, so that's what's different about this one from the last. That's exciting. You got a drill record. Are you rapping on it? <laughs> nah, I'm not. I'm not okay. rapping. I'm singing on it. It's crazy. Because <laughs> you know, there's like the there's like the new kind of like melodic drill wave going on right now. Like a yeah. lot of people think drills going towards that side of the of uh, that side of music. Yeah. Do you feel? Do you, is that what you're tapping I into agree. a little bit? Yeah, so that's why I was like, Dad, I gotta, I gotta do something because you know the tension spin is like this now, so you gotta keep people, you know, going and interested. So I was like, what can I do different? And it came to me. I was like, oh, this is dope. All right, this is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I love I, I listen this. to pop smoke and all that all day anyway, five or four and all of them. So I'm like, why not do something? I listen to them all day, day anyway. So <laughs> I was like, let me do it with Anima Baby Story. No, that's exciting. Cause you know, like I'm a big fan of like the melodic drill stuff and what people like Q run it up and like Rocco Ball and are doing. So to see it kind of going in that way and as just like a fan of melodic stuff in general, it's kind of cool that I guess you're able to tap into to that to that sound now and that's going on in the city. Yeah. Right. It wasn't easy, but I did it. I could write. I could definitely write. Why wasn't it easy? Because it was different from my style, to, my comfortability, right? So I had to break out of that comfort zone to tap into this record, but I'm happy I did. <laughs> I'm definitely happy I did. That's that I love that for you. So with so with this last project, right? The deluxe came out back in August. Um, mm -hmm. this was kind of like I feel like your introduction to everybody. You had a little bit of everything on there. You had some really dope records. You know, obviously Flossie is is a great record. Ops don't blame me, but also you. some ones that I really enjoyed. With that project and kind of you introducing yourself to people, what did you kind of want people to get from the from the It's Nima Baby project? Like what did you want people to take away from that? Well, I wanted them to see that I'm different. Like, I'm not just like a regular R&B singer. Like, I can do anything, pretty much. Like, if you, whatever you put in front of me, if it's, like I said, if it's a reggae record, if it's a pop record, I can do it. Like, it's nothing, I believe it's nothing I can't do. It. I'll probably do a rock and roll record. Who knows? <laughs> so that's what I wanted them to get. Also, just feel my personality and see who I am through my pen. Because I'm like super bubbly, outgoing. I'm an extrovert, so I wanted them to kind of feel my personality. 
No, nah, I, de- I definitely like feel that, especially through like the different records that were on here. I mean, like you had some, you had some like serious jokes, but like you also were turning up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You kind of gave people like a little bit of everything and kind of like, you know, like you said with this new project where there's like a little more different things that you're doing mm-hmm. on there. And you still, you gave the people the diversity that you were like, okay, I can do this, this, and this. And whatever side of me you want to fuck with, you can fuck with. Right. And also I wanted to make songs that was relatable. Like, like, um, don't blame me. Mm. That was a true story, you know? Wow. <laughs> so it was like, they really like, what? I know people have been in that situation too, like, damn, fuck, how I get here with this, this dude? Like, what's going on? Like, it happens, you know? And then now I'm I'm like in a freaking mess because I got this guy and this guy. Like, so if you really listen to it, what people say the most? Like, I'm sorry, I was drunk, <laughs> <laughs> right? So. We gonna blame it on the liquor. That's it. Blame it on alcohol. Don't blame it on me. That's it. <laughs> Do you feel we are kind of like talking about these different um, scenarios in your life? Like, cause certain scenarios, it's obviously like it's they're easier to talk about. But when you get like the real personal stuff about like you know dudes and like relationships and this and that and you put the alcohol in there do you like are you like nervous to put records like that out and kind of like have people be like oh shit she talking about this like. I was at first, cause like I started doing music a while ago um, when I was like 19 and I was working with the track masters and um, we had, they had like a little group called Sin City and I was one of the members. And some of the things they would talk about, I kind of wasn't ready to talk about yet. And I didn't really get it, but I know that's, that's music. But as I got a little older, it made sense to me. Like, duh, you have to put your personal experiences out there because it's always that one person that's going through something that need that. They need that. You can't be shy. And I would be kind of like holding back a little bit. And I wouldn't put still everything out there because I didn't want to be judged a certain way. But one day, honestly, I just woke up and I said, I don't give a flying, you know what? I don't know if I can curse on here, but you I, can. Like, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to write what I want to write. And they like it or they don't like it. And if they judge me, oh, well, who cares? I'm still going to be me. So when I, when I kind of let my guards down and stop judging or oh, well, worrying about what people's going to say, oh, no, I should saying that in the song. Like, oh, she must be doing, like, it was so much easier. I feel so much <laughs> free. Now I can write what I want. <laughs> I love that. I love, and I, that's a good, I mean, at least you feel like you feel that freeness to kind of write what you want and do all that. Mm-hmm. I can be creative now. I feel like I was, I wasn't being as creative as I could be. I wasn't giving my full potential. Do you feel like this next project is kind of close to what you feel like is your full potential or is your full potential? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But I feel like I could, me, I'm always growing, so I could always go harder. Mm-hmm. This project is great, but I'm pretty sure the next, project is going to be even better. So I never say, hey, this is all I can get because I know it's always more that I can get. Right, you know, it's right. different things I'm going to go through in life. Life is crazy. Life, <laughs> so, life is insane, indeed. It's crazy. So there's always going to be something else. With um, what you were talking about writing a lot, how long have you been writing for? Like, when was like your first kind of, you know, introduction <laughs> to writing and, and the music stuff? Oh, the crazy thing is my first song I wrote when I was seven. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and it was about my little brother. It was like stupid, but I don't know. Like I was just, I sat down one day and I just wrote a whole song and then I wrote a rap when I was like 13. <laughs> and then, and then it was kind of, it was kind of cool with a rap, but it wasn't too shabby. Okay. I don't remember exact words, but I remember it like being adult. But 14 is when I really I had my song book. And that's what I had books, books, just writing songs, a whole bunch of songs. My mother be like, how many songs you got now? How many songs you got now? She got like a hundred. She got to tell her the whole world. And I just, I love writing. Even if I could write for people in the industry, I would be honored to do that as well. Right. I was even thinking about that. I was going to add, that was my next question is like, cause you know, I meet a lot of people on the show who are, who are artists, but they've also done a lot of work behind the scenes for people. So I wasn't sure if you had mm-hmm. had the pleasure of, of working with any artists behind the scenes or anything like that. No, I haven't, but I would love to. If the opportunity presents itself, I'm all for it. I love that. Who are, who do you feel like were some of your inspirations growing up? Um, I love Erica Badu. Erica Badu, okay, for okay. Sure. For sure. Mary, of course. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, all the old um, TLC and stuff like TLC was actually the first time my mom said I was singing. <laughs> she told me I was singing um, Baby and I was singing. Uh, 
um, Real Love by Mary J. Bob, which right. I actually did a, a you know, kind of remix to. Right, right. For my now, boy, so. Who do you feel like, okay, so this leads to my next question. If you had to, and, and I ask this question a lot now because I regret I regretted not asking it to an artist once and I will never not ask it again. If So you have your first big record, right? Mm -hmm. You know, your first big hit, you know what I'm saying? It's putting up numbers, it's on the playlist, on the charts, all that. Who are you putting on the remix to it? Like, who do you really want to work with and get on and have jump on it? Well, if it's, okay, so my, my favorite rapper is Lil Durk and Drake. And um, my favorite like artist is A Boogie. So I would definitely want A Boogie on it, if it's like a melodic flow, but if it's some something where we could put Dirk on it or Drake, ooh, that sounds crazy already. I'm just thinking about it. <laughs> but definitely, that's what I, I would definitely out of those three. That's a that's hilarious because the person who I was just on on a Zoom with right before you also said a boogie. Yeah, but it's a new. I think it's a New York thing. It's a New York thing. It's a New York thing. You know what I'm saying? A boogie is so versatile. Like he he he's so dope. He is like fire. I could go back when I listen to my car and I'll bring up some of his old stuff and I'll just be like, this is so good. <laughs> it's so good. So definitely. That would be that would be fire. I gotta I have arguments with a about with people about Avo all the time. I'm like, I don't think y'all understand, you know what I'm saying? Especially like the really young kids. I'd be like, yo, I don't think y'all understand how 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 this man had his foot on like the entire New York City's neck. Still does. Like if he dropped tomorrow, mm -hmm. like that whole thing will come right back. But like mm -hmm. I remember seeing him like early on, like um in like the Ma shit days. Uh the first yeah, project, I, mean, I, we'll say that. <laughs> I forgot what the first project was, but I remember being at a show and it was all just like like early college, late high school girls, and and it was just like, yo, the way that he had these people moving ridiculous i hadn't ever seen some shit like that before up until that time and then i was like oh yeah like, like he got he got the he got his foot on, on on this entire city yeah he made that a lot of shit like lit <laughs> yeah like, for real for real because i like he was like no i don't want to say the first but i feel like one of the first to really do that like deja Loaf, i know she had had that same kind of vibe yeah when that a boogie came out everybody was on that wave now that's all you hear and i'm like oh that's not a boogie oh wait that's no and it's like they're not trying to be like a boogie but it's he's so inspiring so it's just like okay i'm gonna rock out with it i'm gonna do a track like this so he definitely inspiring especially in new york specifically like a day's love was good for the whole country but in new york right. it, was, it was a boogie we love a buggy. <laughs> we do. So, aside from the new project, what else do you have on the way that the people got to be on the lookout for uh, in the coming in the rest of twenty twenty one? Yeah. Well, I'm dropping some videos to go with the project. Okay, we love to see. We love to hear that. Yeah, definitely. So, and hopefully, I can work with some. You know, I want to really work with some other in independent underground artists mm. that's also trying to come up too, because we probably can make a hit record and it blow up. Yeah. You know, Cardi B said you only need one song. <laughs> you, do, you only need one song to so blow up. So I'm trying to make it happen. And if I have the opportunity to work with, like, hey, boogie, I'm praying on it. That'll be so dope. But definitely my project and um, my videos and stuff to go along with it. Well, this is all very exciting. Heavy on the pretty on the way. Um, the way. Sooner, Hopefully sooner than y'all than y'all even expect. Um, yes. Anything else that the people got to know before we sign off here for the day? Let them know where they can follow um, you at. Anything else yeah, that you want to put in there? Sure now's time. Follow me on Instagram is at it's me, my baby, I T S N I M A B A B Y. I'm also on Spotify, Apple Music, Title. Just put a me, my baby, and I M A space B A B Y. And follow me on TikTok too. I'll be I'll be lit on TikTok. Yes. Mom on TikTok be lit. Okay, I can't dance really, but I can dance in my head. So. Follow me on the time. It's Nima Baby. Everything is Nima Baby. Boom. All right. Well, make sure y'all go run up heavy on the pretty. When it drops, go run up that debut project out now. Yes. Go follow her on TikTok. And until next time, it's Nima Baby on the radar. Thank you.